tonight on DCS Add-on Spotlight. We take a look at the DCS moving map add-on. We wait for the arrival of the Swedish SK-60. We visit a forward operating base in the Caucasus. And we open the South Atlantic sea traffic with more ships. This and more on how I play. Hello Virtual Pilots, I'm Andre Celesti and welcome to the fifth episode for the Add-on Spotlight series where we take a look at the most recent add-ons available for DCS World. If you find yourself checking the user section on the DCS page very often for unique missions files, skins, fixes and immersive add-ons, well, you'll be right at home here at How I Play. Of course, we won't manage to show all of them here on the channel, so if you know something that we missed, message us down below and we will take a look in a future episode. This time I'm recording from the annual vacation trip in Finland, so please keep in mind that the video may stray from the usual quality in audio and video being presented. And without further ado, let's start! First up is the new upcoming addition to DCS, the SK-60 by Bus Dynamics. A dual-engine trainer light attack jet plane made by Sierra Alpha Alpha Bravo in Sweden. It's been used by both the Swedish and Austrian Air Forces and is the aircraft flew by the legendary Team 60. The development of this mod is nearing its release stage, for now it doesn't have a confirmed release date, but we will wait patiently for more information soon. Moving on with the F-18C realistic heads-up display, a mod that provides a realistic depiction on how the Hornet hood works in real life. At least, that's the intention of the author. This mod is best experienced in VR. The author explains that in real life, the F-18C HUD can only display symbology on the area of the combiner glass that reflects the combiner lens. The pilot seems only a portion of the symbology with each eye, and his brain fuses the image on both eyes into a single image of the entire symbology. Now this sounds very complicated. The real heads-up display also displays a green glow on low-light conditions when the brightness of the HUD is too high. This makes the real HUD a bit harder to see and use than what is depicted by default in DCS. So in the end, this mod intends to simulate the limitation of the real heads-up display in order to bring the Hornet simulation a step closer to realism. Now I would like to know if this is actually the case in the real world. Maybe we have some fighter pilots in the community that can confirm this is the case. Nonetheless, an exquisite add-on for our operations and I like it. Next, we have a DCS nav map, a navigation system and radar map for DCS World that brings the functionality of tracking your flight and others in real time from a secondary screen or mobile device. It has the following main functions, displaying your own position and data, the radius of a circle around the user module, also it displays the position of other objects, airplanes, helicopters and ships. SAM launchers are also displayed with information about the current missiles in the air. The airport on the map are depicted with proper information and also available ILX tracks and navigations. We also have the ability to enable disable displaying individual objects on the map, changes in the map type and it works with any module. Once I return from my vacation, I will definitely test this app available now for a decent price in the App Store, Play Store and others. Next up is Crazy Eddie's Static Building Mod, an updated version of his previous Static Building Mod for DCS, and as the author says, it's eye candy and nothing more. But I like candy. So do I. This mod consists of mainly older buildings from the original Caucasus map, which still work in the game. They are repainted in a modern style, and this particular pack contains the buildings that still work. Apparently. There are many more, but they don't longer work in the game. Oh well, it's going to be a useful addition to create missions and campaigns. Sticking with missions in mind, we got the forward operating base Dublin for the Caucasus, designed mostly for people who play PvE. This base requires multiple mods, it just happened, I already have them all. No wonder with all the add-on spotlight episodes that we did before. The camp looks awesome, it even has pre-made patrols to add to the immersion and the Apache and the Blackhawk will feel right at home here. 
Now if you remember, in our DCS on the spot news video that featured the South Atlantic map tour, we mentioned the undiscovered airfields that are present in the map but not marked yet. Well, somebody noticed as well and created a draft map with plenty of positions which may be used to build great missions. It's the South Atlantic Airfield list by Jode or Jody. I hope I pronounce it right, if not you have my humble apologies. The hope is that in the early access period the devs will populate as a standard the large and medium airfields. Well, cheers for that! Moving on, we have the Hawkeye Civilian Ship mod updated for 2.7 with new liveries by Crazy Eddie. Hawkeye created a number of civilian ships a couple of years ago, simple eye candy low poly models which he released at various times. Those mods all stopped working quite a while ago, so the author decided to reconstruct the folders and get them working again. He also added a few new liveries to them in the process. Please note that these are low poly models intended as simple eye candy to fill our oceans. Close up, some are better than others, but none of them are of a particular high quality. He added liveries for the SS Uganda and Northland, both ships were used by the British in the Falkland War. Uganda as a hospital ship and Northland as a troop transport. Team them up with 8 balls trawler and you have a viable non-military addition to the task force. As the Royal Navy took up several deep sea trawlers and used them as minesweepers. They also took up a number of small tankers and sent them south to refuel the fleet whilst at sea. So the author included two types of those as well. Also from Crazy Eddie, we got the Royal Naval Dockyard Tugs. Three Royal Navy Dockyard Tugs skins by Serco LTD to go with the latest small tugboat that have appeared in the game. Both packs are well taught additions to our DCS South Atlantic operations, and Crazy Eddie did it again. Thank you for your work and passion. Now, as we started talking about the South Atlantic content, we got a useful Falkland SAM template. An accurate template for all air defense sites in the South Atlantic map by Rasbam. Perfect for mission creators looking to make a scenario in a realistic depiction of the region. The integrated air defense system network includes all SAM and EWR sites that are accurately typed and placed to match their real world counterparts, with some liberties taken due to the map geometry and DCS issues. On top of that, Skynet manages the network to ease performance and create a more realistic environment. We also got extras with oil platforms surrounding the Falkland Islands and two detailed highway strips. As mentioned before, the Skynet and Moose A2A dispatcher are both present in the mission. The author highly encourages you tweak them as needed to fit the scenario you aim to create. And also, keep at least some form of Skynet running the SAM sites, as there are a whole lot of them and performance will tank if they are allowed to act under the standard DCS AI. Next up, we have the Argentinian YPF fuel trucks by Baco, a modern and retro Argentinian petrol company skins for the ATZ-5 fuel truck, and two more Argentinian Camas and Gas 66 as Unimogs. Moving on with a fictional Argentinian Mirage 2000 livery by Maximus RZ, the dagger of the Group 6 hunting that contains three variants, one with the yellow identification bands, then with light blue bands, and one with afterbands. All with dynamic numbers on the wings, gear, nose cover and rudder, but sadly at this time the model does not allow the dynamic numbers on the fuselage. The pilot has a personalized helmet, a flight suit with shields and those who are painted with the bands wear the orange jacket. And remaining in the South Atlantic map, we got a mission called the Dusk Raid, Goose Green, 28 May 1982. Operation Sutton, that features from 1 up to 3 players voice acting and news broadcast from 1982, the mission was historically modeled and has a 40 minute duration. It is based on the diaries of Squadron Aldr Puk, an RAF Harrier pilot who flew this sortie over Goose Green. The routes, timing, payloads, weather and enemy troops are all accurately modeled. Some of the procedures flown on the actual strike have been changed to give your pilot something to do en route. There are two versions of this mission, one that requires the minimum and one with a high number of cosmetic mods, to replicate the different units based on the Falklands. All of the mods are free and none of the mods will cause integrity issues when placed in your save game folder. I wanted to include videos of this mission, but sadly as I am away from the studio, I cannot record any in-game material. Next up, 
is a livery for the AA64D UNCS Apache Pelicans. All textures are 4K with custom half-glass-like finish. Then we have a few Romanian Air Force liveries for the Mirage, with colors being inspired from the MiG-21 Lancer A that overflies my region from time to time. Moving on, I would like to mention the two 22 M3 reflection effects and 2K textures, a remake of the module with a completely improved look and more detail. Could be useful. For the F-14 we found a series of amazing liveries called Wind Riders Aggressive Club, a digital camel, splitter and low visibility. This is an original skin created to motivate gameplay, a fictitious aggressor specialty company like ATAC. This is not intended for virtual squadrons in particular, so you can use it without any issues in your operations. And in the end, we have a SAM side asset pack by Let Me Pick That and Arrow. This is a simple IC compliant mod that adds some 3D props and radars to populate your SAM sites, FARPs, and any other bases that you wish to build or improve. The mod was designed with the Syrian and Persian Gulf maps in mind, and the authors made sure that it works well with a high digit SAM mod. The pack contains a lot of protection elements for SAMs, raising birds for radar systems, ammunition and command bunkers, HESCO barriers and various shapes and sizes, a lot of fences, both with and without barbed wire, different types of camo netting, which can be used to conceal vehicles or supplies, sandbag walls again in various shapes and sizes, various vehicles and pieces of equipment, spare bombs on trolleys, a forklift, mobile toilets, hedgehogs, a communication tower, container, farp walls and many, many other stuff. And that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. If you want to support our channel, feel free to use the thanks button that was recently implemented by YouTube. And remember to leave us a like if you find our video informative and subscribe to keep in touch with all the latest news on your favorite simulators and games. I'm Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.